the seed of religion is perverted by self-will. We have already mentioned that the knowledge of God must be such as effectively to plant in our hearts some seed of religion. This is so that first we may be taught to fear and reverence God, and second that we may learn that all good things must be sought in him, and that for these we owe him the duty of gratitude. For how can your mind conceive of God if you do not immediately see that you who are his handiwork are by right of creation subject to and dependent on his rule? That your life should be devoted to his service? That everything you plan, say and do should be referred to him? If that is so, it obviously follows that your life is terribly corrupt if it is not governed by obedience to his holy will. Then too, you cannot clearly comprehend him unless you recognize that he is the fountain source of all that is good. That thought would surely make us want to be united with him and to trust in his goodness, except that our mind is kept by its own willfulness from properly pursuing its inquiry. But whether in this way or in some other, we all give evidence of prodigious vanity and foolishness. Instead of maintaining a lifelong attitude of constant obedience to God, we resist him in almost everything we do and try to placate him by making a few paltry amends. Instead of pleasing him by holiness and innocence of heart, we invent a mishmash of paltry ceremonies, hoping that these will occupy his attention. What is more, the trust which should centre wholly on him is placed instead in ourselves or other creatures. Lastly, we are entangled in so much error and evil belief that the spark of truth which might enlighten us and lead us to behold God's majesty is hidden and extinguished. It is incapable, therefore, of leading us to a true knowledge of him. There remains only the initial seed, which can never be completely removed. That is to say, we know that there is a deity. Even so, the seed is so corrupt that it produces only rotten fruit.